Last year, I made a video where I upgraded the CR-10S Pro to Wham Bam's FlexPlate system. FlexPlate systems have totally spoiled me, and unless there's a unique situation where I have to use glass, it's definitely become my go-to setup. The main materials I print with are PLA, PETG, and occasionally ABS, and this PEX sheet on their FlexPlate system has worked really well, and based off the feedback I've received from you guys, it sounds like you guys have really enjoyed this as well. A few weeks ago, I did a review on the FL Sun Q5, which, as you can see here, is a relatively relatively compact printer considering that it's a Delta printer. Wham Bam ended up reaching out to me and said, hey, we have since last time you reviewed our FlexPlate system added a ton of different sizes to our uh, web store, including a bunch of sizes for Delta printers, which is awesome because there's a lot of people out there that love Delta printers and I often feel like Delta printers are like one of those style machines that kind of get left out. So seeing that they had added a ton of plates for just about every size of Delta printer, I was pretty pumped on that. They've got a 115, a 200, a 220, a 240, a 310, a 350, and a 380, which is insane. It pretty much covers the whole scope of any um, size Delta printer as far as I know that's out there. Although I really do like the stock glass diamondy build surface on the Q5, I am super excited to install this flex plate system because it still is my preferred printing method above all else. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and talk a bit about flex plate systems. We're going to, of course, install this on the Q5 behind me. And then after that, we are going to do some printing. I hope you guys are excited. Let's get into the video. A lot of you guys have been following my channel for some time now know that I have been 3D printing for many years. I got my first 3D printer in 2014 and back then there was certainly no standard for a build plate or a build surface. Everything from um, glass with glue stick, glass with hairspray, blue painters tape, um, capped on tape, PEI tape, regular build tack, um, uh, ABS, slurry, and a whole other wide variety of adhesives were kind of things that were experimented with. And there's still a lot of those that are used today. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. They all work really well. But once I got my hands on my first flex plate system, again, that has become my go-to. With those build surfaces, if your nozzle is just a little too close to the bed, then you're gonna have to pry your part off, which does a couple things. One, it risks you damaging your part. Two, it risks you damaging your build surface. And three, if nothing else, certainly means that it's going to affect your bed being level. If you put a lot of pressure on the bed, it'll compress the springs and allow the nut underneath to spin freely, meaning that your bed will have to be re-leveled a lot more often. And in rare situations, granted this hasn't happened to me too often, but there's been a few situations where the part has gotten so welded that prying the part off has caused it finally to slip and then for me to literally punch the bed surface, which again, I think since starting that's only happened like two or three times, but it has happened and I used to do a ton of printing and two or three times is too many in my opinion. Flex plate systems essentially work in three parts. You've got one part that's the magnetic base, which is going to be permanently adhered to the top of your printer's build surface. Then you've got a spring steel sheet, which is the sheet that actually is held on. The magnets will hold that piece into place and then you've got a consumable, which then gets laid on top of that spring steel. And that's the actual part, in this case, the PEX, which is what grips onto your printed parts. And so when the part's done, you just pull off the spring steel, which has the PEX on it, you flex it, and your part pops right off. This solves all those issues that I talked about before. Even if your part is a bit too close to the build surface, the PEX is relatively strong. I haven't really ran into any issues with the nozzle damaging it. And if the nozzle is just too close, you can always buffer it out with the wire mesh that's included. But even if, again, it is too close, you can still pop the part right off. You don't have to take a spatula to it, so you're not risking damaging a part if it's really fragile or damaging the build surface. So that PEX sheet is gonna last a really long time. You're not causing your bed to become unleveled because as soon as the print's done, you take it off, you flex it away from your plate, you, uh, away from your bed, you slap it back on and you're good to go. And obviously you remove the risk of hurting yourself by the spatula slipping and you hitting the printer because again, it's just a simple flex and your part comes right off. The price of a flex plate system is certainly a bit more expensive than just going with one of those alternatives. However, if you're getting just a build sheet surface that you're laying down, the spatula digging into that means that the life of those don't last nearly as long. While with a flex plate system, like I mentioned, the life of the consumable sheet on top 
is substantially longer. I mean, I've had some go six plus months and you really shouldn't have to replace it unless something just goes significantly wrong or I guess if it just gets worn down from you printing repeatedly over and over and over in the same spot for you know a very extended period of time. So installation of the Wham Bam Flex Plate system is pretty much what I just described. Essentially, the first thing you gotta do is clean off your existing build plate surface. I recommend taking some IPA, rubbing alcohol and uh, paper or uh, a nice clean rag and just wiping down that build surface to remove any adhesive that you might have on there or fingerprints. Once that's done, you're gonna peel the 3M adhesive that's on the back of the magnetic base and lay that down from one corner slowly rolling it to the other corner. I use one hand to kind of position it, the other hand to move back and forth and make sure I'm putting pressure and that there's no air pockets that are building up. After that, you just put the spring steel sheet on top of that magnetic base. Same thing goes, I recommend that you rub it down with some IPA alcohol just really quickly because a lot of times when you take it out of the box, you'll get one or two fingerprints on there and not that it's gonna make a huge difference, but maybe it's me being paranoid. I think that you should just wipe it down just to make sure that the adhesive PEX sheet is nice and bonded on there. So once you rub that down, peel off the backing on the PEX sheet. I recommend just peeling it off an inch or two so that way you can line up the corner of it on the spring steel. And then the same thing kind of applies. I use one hand to position it and peel away the backing while I use the other hand to slowly press down back and forth uh, eliminating any air pockets that might potentially build up. It's a pretty thick sheet, so install is not difficult. It's not like doing a, a screen protector on a phone where it's really, really fine and super easy to get air pockets. It's relatively simple, but again, just take your time. You only have to lay it down once, so you might as well do it right. Now that that's installed, you just grab the wire mesh that's included with the, or the steel wool that's included with the Wham Bam system, and go ahead and take that out and just in small circles, rub the PEX sheet. You're essentially just adding microscopic scrapes to the build surface and all that does is it gives the PEX build surface a bit of bite so that way when your parts are printing it gives it that additional adhesion that's needed to ensure that your parts stay in place and do not shift around. The scratches that it's putting on the build surface are so small that you can hardly see them with the eye and if you think you're not doing anything I assure you if you hold it up to a bright light you can see the microscopic scratches. They won't actually translate to your print which is really nice. Again they play a pretty crucial role in ensuring the system works the way that it's supposed to be working. Next and finally take a little bit more IPA, rub down that PEX surface. There's a little bit of residue from the steel wool as well as the um, PEX that you've been scraping. So you just wanna make sure you clean all that off. You wanna make sure that you're left with a very clean surface. So that way, again, your prints do not have anything in between the PEX sheet and the printed part that you're planning on laying down. Now that it's all set up, it's time to do some printing. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my Z offset and really quickly run a re-level sequence on my FL Sun Q5 and we will do some printing. As you can see, the Wampam Flex Plate system did an awesome job of holding on to the printed parts. The base of the parts look fantastic. It almost looks like you're printing directly on glass with how smooth this material is. And I cannot wait to do a lot more printing with the Q5. Now that I've got the Flex Plate system, it gives me just even more of a reason to pull this out and include it in some of my projects. Out of curiosity, how many of you guys are already using a Flex Plate system? I know that they have become more and more standard and I'd be curious to know how many of you guys are already using some kind of a Flex Plate system. Let me know in the comments down below. And if a Flex Plate system is not something that you've used before, after watching this, if you do go ahead and pick up 
up a flex plate system. Also let me know in the comments down below what your opinion is on it because I seriously think you're gonna love it. Links will of course be in the description in case you do wanna find out more about the Wham Bam flex plate system or if you want to purchase one for yourself, there is a ton of variety of sizes. It's not just for Delta printers of course, but Delta is being the machine that I feel like gets left out quite a lot. I wanted to make a video dedicated just to flex plate systems for Delta printers. As always guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. I make a video every single Saturday and if you enjoy the content and you want to support the channel even more, links will be in the description down below to my Patreon. I really appreciate all of you guys that are helping support the channel, which allows me to spend more time doing what I love, which is creating content for you guys. On that note, I will see you guys in my next video. This has been Daniel from ModBot and I am out. Peace guys.